stench of civil war fills the sultry English summer of 1643. Gloucester's Puritans give Parliament its only West Country stronghold in the struggle against a self-centred and wasteful king. Charles I could never have their love. Now he's lost their recognition as England's sovereign. The storm clouds roll in, bringing with them a wave of horror and misery. On August the 10th, the king arrives with an army of 6,000 and confidently demands the city's surrender. But the soldier and citizen sent out to meet him remain undaunted. Your Majesty may have Gloucester, if Parliament decrees it, comes the terse reply. Charles is furious. He leads his followers away, determined to ride into the city as a conqueror. The army advances, and it seems that Gloucester will soon be overrun. The soldiers burn everything in their path. Houses and even a church go up in flames. But so great is the inferno that it drives the royalists back. Colonel Edward Massey, the young governor, uses the time to set up a network of barricades which are never to be breached effectively. The king opens up with his artillery. Cannonballs rip into the ancient church of St. Mary de Crypt. They lop off the spire of St. Nicholas Church. Wreck a priory. And damage many houses. However, the people are fighting for their lives. They've heard stories of what the royalists will do to them, and they're determined never to give in. He strikes back. Normally peaceful fields around the city are transformed into a battlefield with the smell of black gunpowder and the stark reality of death. Cannon mercilessly pound the medieval East Gate. When the barrage fails, the King's engineers mine the walls but a tremendous downpour brings them spluttering and gasping from their holes. The Puritans thank God for their deliverance. Massey's response is a masterstroke. He and Sir William Waller lead a commando-style raid on a company of Welsh royalists camped at Hynham. They're taken completely by surprise and routed. The death toll among the Welshmen is so great that even the attackers feel sickened. The bashing Prince Rupert leads a spectacular charge against the northern boundary. This too is beaten off and the defenders display a brand of discipline unknown to the Cavaliers. Charles and James, the royal princes, see little of the siege. They're kept under close protective guard in Matson House on the city outskirts. These two future kings of England 
spend much of their time carving notches on the windowsill of their tiny room. From the window, they watch their father riding on the peaceful hillside opposite. Only a mile away, the skirmishes continue to be fought with all of the early ferocity. And the beleaguered defenders have other problems to contend with. The city's conduits, which provide vital water supplies, suddenly run dry. The royalists have diverted springs which keep the water flowing. Again, Massey rises to the challenge. He has alternative supplies drawn from the River Severn and stored in the cathedral grounds. the people are also on the brink of starvation. The markets have run out of food. Those in most need get a surprise meal when a scavenging pig is killed by a cannonball. Fatigue and deprivation have brought Gloucester to the brink of surrender. And Massey is down to his last barrel of gunpowder. Suddenly the gloom is lifted. Beacon fires on surrounding hills signal the approach of a long overdue relief column led by the Earl of Essex. The royalists panic and disperse into the countryside. So the Puritan army enters the city in triumph, without even a skirmish. The soldiers are given a rapturous welcome. Thank you. 